Uh, so now I think we can announce the next speaker. It's my pleasure to announce Yale Du. She is a lecturer at King's College London and a member of the Distributed Artificial Intelligence Group. Prior to joining King, she was a postdoctoral research fellow at University College London, and she obtained her PhD from the University of Technology of Sydney. Her research interest lies in machine learning and reinforcement learning, especially in the topics of multi-agent learning, policy evaluation, and applications to game AI, data science, and wide decision-making tasks. So today's talk will be on decision structure in decentralized multi-agent learning. Uh, please, uh, you can start with your talk. Thank you. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for the introduction. So before I start, I just want to test, can you uh, see, you see my screen clearly? Yes. OK, great. I, I am uh, the uh, last speaker of this uh, the, the first session. And I uh, hope I will keep it uh, on time so that you could have several minutes break before the uh, next uh, before the next batch of talks. Um, so I will get started. Uh, my name is Yali Du. I, I am a lecturer at uh, King's College London, and uh, today I will talk about the decision structure in decentralized multi-agent learning. Uh, since uh, previously we have discussed a lot of works in safe, robust, uh, generalizable reinforcement learning, robot planning, or POM, or, or uh, learning in the POM, POM MDPs, and uh, here I just want to discuss uh, some works in the. Uh, discuss some works on the multi-agent learning and hopefully it will advocate the research in safe multi-agent decision making. So over the last years we have witnessed the great success of AI which as mentioned in the in the in the professor Ninja talk is the following a waterfall structure where we have we have, we have a kind of a bunch of data and we extract some knowledge based on this data such as learning to perform classification uh, object detection or, or object detection or machine translations and uh, in the recent several years actually uh, they are Actually, the AFCO launched uh, another revolution for AI uh, in the by the reinforcement learning, and uh, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of advancements in the uh, in the uh, reinforcement learning, especially for the game playing, like uh, like Upstar or Dot or the Dot Two, and uh, there are also many companies getting involved in the. Uh, in, in, in the advancement of uh, reinforced learning techniques. So basically this is a closed the loop learning process based on the uh, knowledge, based on the agent's knowledge. It, uh, based on the agent knowledge, it uh, interact with the environments and uh, get feedback and update its knowledge. So here, uh, so here we see that many scenarios requires uh, reinforced learning and like uh, the uh, playing video games and uh, the board games and also the uh, uh, autonomous uh, autonomous driving cars and the adaptive traffic uh, ad adaptive traffic light control problems. So one thing that I would like to point out here is that uh, uh, is that actually look at this problem. It's uh, not a uh, in, it's not a single agent problem. It's a uh, multi agent systems. So in many cases, like just such as in the game of Go or Upstar, it requires the participation of uh, the participation of two players. Or in the autonomous driving scenarios, it. Uh, uh, each autonomous driving car needs to interact with uh, different uh, uh, in, in other social vehicles, social vehicles in the environment, or uh, to avoid uh, uh, to avoid a crash with other vehicles. And uh, so, basically, for the multi-agent system, we can see that it's uh, also ubiquitous in our real lives, like uh, in the telecom, in the te telecom neural networks, or in the healthcare robots that are helps that are helps patients or self-driving cars that are managed to deliver customers to destinations safely and swiftly, and all in the uh, all in the all the petrol or poacher in the wildlife protection scenarios or the drone formation tasks, etc. So in all of these examples, we have uh, many agents, and they have to cooperate or compete to carry out their overall objectives. And uh, for the multi-agent learning, we consider using reinforcement learning and machine learning algorithms to solve multi-agent tasks, including cooperation, competition, coordination, or decentralization, etc. So based on the reinforcement learning techniques, we just uh, first uh, uh, briefly introduced the notations of elements of the reinforcement learning here. 
So for the so for the deep reinforced learning, we have this kind of uh, uh, one agent. We assume that there is a static environment on the right hand side, and this agent perceives the state and the reward from the environment, and it takes an action according to its policy pi. And uh, for the deep reinforced learning, this policy pi is usually parameterized by deep neural networks. And then this environment undergoes state transitions, where a state is here conditioning on the action taken by the agent and the previous state. So this agent, the, this agent perspective is to maximize the total return across uh, the whole episode. And this agent can interact with the environment over and over again to learn optimal policy, given that this environment is static. And uh, here, but uh, basically, basically, usually due to the uh, complexity of the real world problems, there are often uh, there are often multiple agents exist in the same environment. And uh, for the multi agent systems, we have uh, several agents existing at the same time, and each of them we have uh, could have their own rewards observations and uh, take their own actions. So basically, here let's assume there are like uh, three agents, and uh, this environment. And what makes this problem difficult is that the environmental transition is not conditioning only on only on one single agent, but on the joint a joint actions of other agents as well. This is also relevant to the uh, to the non stationarity problem that's discussed earlier, because from one single agent perspective, this environment is not static; it's not stationary because of uh, the changing agents of uh, because of, of the existence of other changing agents. So this tells us that uh, we can't simply ignore the existence of other agents by taking them as part of environment, because if so, this environment is that is not static. And so for this, uh, so for the multi agent learning, so uh, basically, usually we formalize that as a, a multi agent uh, Markov decision process and then solve that by the uh, multi agent learning problems, multi agent learning techniques. So let's first look at the uh, uh, look at the formation for the uh, these tasks. Firstly, let's look at the Markov decision process. So I think uh, uh, many people will be very, very familiar with, with with this. So for a MDP, we have uh, an agent observe a state S, and it can select an action A, which is from from some action space, and we have a state transition function that this uh, is the transition function that defines the uh, transition from the uh, current state to the new state. And the re reward is uh, it's dependent on the state and action. So the goal of for, the goal of for solving this MTP is to uh, is to maximize the cumulative discount return. And uh, for the multi-agent MDP, for the multi-agent MDP, we first we could uh, kind of uh, uh, simply interpret it as a kind of uh, at a joint action space for for the single agent MDP. And so each agent, assume each agent could observe a group state, and uh, each agent has an individual action. So the joint action would be denoted as this uh, this letter A, this letter A in both cases. And uh, the state transition is dependent on the joint actions, not the individual action AI. And there's also team reward based on the joint actions. And it's equivalent to an MDP with factor uh, with, with factor action space. So uh, based on this uh, based on this uh, uh, multi agent MDP, how could we solve that? So if we treat this uh, if we treat this uh, uh, joint actions as uh, the decisions of one big single agent. Actually, the existing single agent, uh, existing single agent uh, method would could be applied here, such as the uh, uh, the uh, independent, such as the uh, uh, PPO or A to C algorithms. We just uh, uh, make decision based on the just the take the joint observations of all, all agents and make decisions for each agent respectively. And uh, but here it's uh, here is uh, this is uh, this could be some uh, straightforward solution for this, but it might suffer from uh, the issues like uh, the scalability, uh, the scalability because you have uh, to deal with a, a uh, exponentially growing large action space, and uh, here we are. 
and our work in the year 2019 proposed one solution to uh, address the uh, scalability problem for the uh, for the video games and uh, or you could uh, treat each in the, you could uh, uh, treat each agent as an independent agent that ignores the, that ignores other agents and we could use the independent policies and so each agent to make decisions based on its own observations and this uh, and and uh, in this case, actually, it's um, in this case, actually, it might uh, have uh, the uh, uh, non-stationarity problem. So it compensate a trade-off is to use is to use centralized critic in training in the training process. So the represented works include a lot of uh, uh, value decomposition methods, QMix or policy gradient methods, uh, comma by forest and our earlier work on the on the uh, uh, intrinsic uh, on the intrinsic reward. Uh, intrinsic reward for credit assignments uh, later in the 2019. And, uh, but here, these this agents are still making decisions independently during the execution time. So another, so another, uh, another line of work consider communication, consider communications among the agents in the execution time so that it could, uh, it could help uh, to uh, improve the observation improve the observability of each independent agent. And uh, the recent research consider uh, consider how to select the communication target. And there are like uh, also some works, uh, the uh, flow come, uh, the flow come by us in the MS 2021 or the TAMAX by desks in the SML 2019 for selecting the, uh, for, se for selecting the uh, prioritize the communication targets. And uh, so, so here, uh, now let's focus on fully decentralized learning and execution. So how could we perform fully decentralized learning and execution? Uh, get rid of centralized critic, centralized training. So here, uh, it, trivially, we could just apply the independent, uh, like independent, independent, independent policy optimization, like independent proximal policy gradient or independent act critic. And uh, sometimes it's uh, sometimes it, 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 it they reported to to achieve a higher empirical performance, but there's a lack on, on, of understanding of uh, like uh, why the performance is good or why its performance is bad. And uh, recently, there's another work uh, called the scalable uh, scalable actor critic. It's uh, uh, proposed uh, by uh, by uh, uh, Guan Nanjun in 2021. And in this case, they have uh, they have uh, assumed that uh, this multi agent system this multi agent system has a uh, dynamic that could be fully factorized. This means that uh, the state transitions of of the agent does not dependent. A lot on the agent that's that's far away from uh, the current ego agent, and in this case, they have pro also provided a convergence guarantee of the policy gradient, and um, uh, so the uh, but they have but the uh, the but they, they didn't consider the case that uh, the uh, the environment dynamics that might not be fully factorizable and also cannot consider the uh, low sample efficiencies of uh, the uh, model free uh, approaches and um, so the let so the rest of the talk for the folks uh, focus more on this uh, uh, this dmpo algorithm decentralized model based policy optimization which uh, in, in, in which in this paper we have uh, uh, improved, uh, we have improved this uh, uh, decentralized multi agent learning in terms of for uh, the sample efficiency and also in terms of for uh, the, re the relaxed I guess, assumption on the factorizable uh, environment dynamics. So let's uh, first, uh, uh, so let's first uh, introduce uh, the uh, the uh, problem setups for this. So this is uh, developed based on the uh, network, the, the, developed based on the network systems. So basically, if we if we want a fully decentralized, uh, fully decentralized uh, system, with uh, uh, we we might need to make some assumptions of the structure of that to make sure that we can understand how the algorithms works here. So we have uh, so we so current so we consider working on the network. Networked multi agent MDP, where we have for uh, we are the we are given the this environment, we have a graph structure where 
we have a graph stretch G. It's, it's a, a, a tuple of uh, V and E. V and V is the, the set of uh, agents, and uh, E is a set of uh, edges. And uh, here we use uh, some notations N i to denote the uh, agent i and its neighbors, and N i k to denote the uh, set of uh, k hop neighbors of agent i. So, for example, in this uh, in in, the, in in this figure here, this blue dot here is agent i, and this uh, uh, green dot would be the would be the one hop neighbor one hop neighbor of agent i. Or it's uh, actually belonging to an eye, and uh, uh, and uh, this uh, on the, in the second figure, uh, these green dots are the actually uh, two hop neighbors of the of the agents, and also uh, similarly you could find the three hop neighbors for this agent, and uh, for the network the MDP we have uh, we define that each agent has a local state S I local state S I, and the group state would be a. Uh, concatenation of the uh, local state from agents. And uh, each agent also has its local action AI. And uh, the global action is also a, uh, just a joint of uh, local actions. And the transition function is dependent on the joint state and joint action. So here we define, we, we, we define that each agent has its own reward. And the joint reward is uh, the average of uh, the joint reward is the average of uh, the uh, uh, local reward. And note that this is also applicable to the scenarios where uh, there's only one team reward with, without uh, local reward, such as some games like uh, uh, like um, the, like soccer. There's only one team reward. So the the objective for this for solving this networked multi agent MDP is to find a joint policy such that the uh, joint reward is maximized. So because we would, uh, because we are, we, we are, we, we are looking for a, the independent policies. So we just factorize this joint policy as the product of, uh, of n independent policies. So independent policy pi i, it, it, it uh, pi i, it, it uh, we sample of ai from pi dependent on the uh, the observation, dependent on the observation as an i, which is uh, agent i state and its neighbor's state. So basically, what could we expect from this kind of uh, uh, network multi-agent systems? So if we so we want to understand how the algorithms works, and we need to understand what could we expect about the, the environment dynamics. So here we consider two case of uh, we consider two cases of the environment environment dynamics the first case is called a independent system where the, in this case environment dynamics can be factorized and agents can uh, and agents can maintain local models to predict future states this factorization is like this so the uh, uh, so this uh, the, the the joint the joint uh, environment dynamics can be factorized as the uh, the product of an independent local dynamics. So for let's look at this uh, uh, this notation here. So for agent i, its transition, it's a new state, it's a, the next state as i prime. It's dependent on its action ai, and it's and the state of its k hop neighbors. So in this case, this means that if k, let's say if k is uh, equal to one, it it says that this. Uh, this transition, this transition of the local state is not uh, influenced by the distant states, distant states that are, are farther than two hop neighbors. So actually, in this case, we could use uh, some uh, uh, scalable approach to approximate the environment dynamics. Say we could have uh, this uh, uh, p hat, p hat that's uh, factorized in this way. We use uh, some parameter, uh, use some uh, like a per uh, different neural networks to parameterize this uh, uh, this dynamics, and it could uh, approximate the factorizable ground truth dynamics. And um, but actually, this uh, this is actually this assumption is actually used in the previous work in the uh, in uh, in Guan Nanxu's work in twenty twenty one. And uh, so, but this it could be a, st a too strong assumption in some cases. So. If this environment transition can't be trivially factorized, let's uh, look at this case. It can't be it can't be factorized as independent uh, systems. So how could uh, so how could we approach that? 
So we assume that there could exist another independent network system, uh, P-bar, such that uh, such that P-bar is a close approximation to P. So P is the ground truth translation function, and P-bar is an approximation to that. So basically, uh, basically, uh, if uh, we uh, we define a uh, quasi dependent system, if this ground truth environment dynamics P could be well approximated by a uh, independent network system P bar. So basically, if we could find if we could find a P bar such that the distance between P bar and P is upper bounded by a uh, by a, uh, a some constant chi, we could see that this system is a chi dependent system and uh, or its distance to an independent system is up bounded by xi. It's not too far away from a uh, uh, independent system, independent system P bar here. And uh, so based on this, based on these two cases, so what we could uh, conclude, what we could have based on this, uh, based on our understanding of the environment dynamics. And uh, so, so firstly, assume that this system is independent, where we have uh, discussed that uh, the environment dy dynamics could be factorized. And then by, app by applying a uh, policy gradient, we could reach that uh, uh, this uh, global policy, this local, local policy gradients would be a, would be a uh, good approximation to a global policy gradients with an error that's uh, uh, that's a proportional to the uh, that's pro proportional to the uh, uh, gamma to the power of uh, k minus one. So basically, this means that uh, this error is uh, is uh, is uh, reduced if you employ a large if you use uh, the uh, uh, if you have a larger k if you have a large k or use uh, uh, more uh, use uh, more neighbors information in the policy gradients. So basically, assume the independent system. This objective, let's look at this objective of uh, policy of the uh, independent uh, independent policy policy gradient for each agent i. So theta i is the uh, uh, parameters for the uh, for the policy for agent i. And uh, since this agent agent i needs to maximize the uh, global maximize the average the reward, so the advantage is uh, uh, is uh, by default defined as uh, the TD the uh, time dif time difference error between the uh, between the uh, uh, between the global value function and uh, the uh, and the, the current estimation VST. So actually, to actually because. Um, uh, be because we want a, a we because we want a uh, independent policy we are, we want independent learning so to access to this uh, global value function could be uh, could not 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 be favored in this case because it requires the information for uh, for other agents uh, for uh, collecting other like other all the global agents rewards so a practical implementation to this is to approximate is to approximate this uh, uh, a hat by this a tilde, which a, where a tilde it only use it, only use the value of uh, only use the value based on the uh, uh, based on the uh, local info uh, local information local neighbors state information, and uh, uh, and here we have uh, and the the uh, we have used the uh, also use the extended value function. So for the intended value function, we take the average over the uh, take the average over the uh, uh, over over this. Uh, uh, values from the neighbor from 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 the agent's neighbors, and we could uh, and we could uh, 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 conclude a uh, proof that proves that uh, basically actually this localized uh, localized policy gradient could be a uh, a good uh, approximation to the global policy gradient. So to so to be able to prove this, we need to show, there's a, there's just a sketch of uh, the proof. So we need to first show that uh, uh, the uh, the distance between VRS and the VRS uh, and the and the distance between the VRS, which is the value the global value, is uh, bound, is bounded by this by this uh, right hand side, and this this bound is uh, is uh, is tighter if we have for uh, the large number of k. So what what this telling us is that uh, basically if we change if we if we uh, 
if we change the state of uh, the neighbor, if, if we change the state, state of the of other agents that's uh, outside the care of neighbor of agent I, this uh, the estimation of the value is not influenced very much. <clears throat> And uh, and then uh, we could have uh, this, uh, and then we could have uh, this uh, kind of uh, bit of derivation to have find the gradient error between gradient error between gi and gi tilde, and uh, uh, also by a little bit of uh, algebra computation we have uh, like uh, this upper bound. The gradient error is upper bounded by uh, by uh, two terms on the left hand side. It's upper bounded by the uh, uh, yeah, some uh, some uh, some constant times the gamma to the to the power of uh, k minus one on the on the right hand side is also, also bound by uh, by the constant times gamma to the power of k plus one. So this means that actually this uh, uh, we have uh, we can bound the the gradient uh, we can bound the uh, local gradient. Uh, and the global uh, and the, the global gradient difference and uh, basically this uh, just provides the confidence of uh, using this localized uh, gradient uh, method and uh, so I also I and next I'll talk briefly about uh, what could we expect in the site dependent systems so for the site dependent system I think we have uh, uh, mentioned that uh, uh, this agent this uh, this system could not be easily trivially factorized, but it can be approximated by an independent system p-bar here. So uh, by by independent system p-bar. So if we could uh, find a, uh, a parameterized uh, uh, dynamics p-hat, like it's, it's parameterized by phi r here, that can approximate the p-bar, and then this p-hat would be, uh, and, and then this distance between p-hat and, and the ground truth dynamic p would be upper bounded by, uh, by xi. And so basically, based on this observation, we, uh, we, we, de we, we designed this uh, model-based uh, optimization algorithm. So for the model-based optimization, we just, uh, it's a, uh, Different from model-free optimization, which optimizes uh, up the update pair policy based on the based on the data sampled from the environment directly. We uh, update the uh, we update the, uh, the 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 policy or the value function based on the uh, data that's generated by the model. And uh, and after we update the policy, this policy will interact 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 with the environment and collect data. And this day and this day, and this uh, true data from environments will be used to update the model. So basically, this would be a, uh, a illustration of uh, a model based reinforced learning. And uh, in this in this model based reinforced learning, we are uh, in uh, we we are. Uh, but, uh, we uh, we uh, just uh, give a uh, kind of uh, a algorithm to summarize that. So basically, uh, basically, what uh, in this case, what we would like to do is to construct a lower bound, construct the lower bound of uh, uh, in in this form. So we want to find a lower bound like this. So uh, the eight p pi is pi's value in the true in the true environment and. Uh, it had pi is pi's value in the estimated in, in the estimated dynamics, and uh, this and uh, we have uh, another term another term c that's dependent on the policy error and the policy er error and and uh, the uh, uh than, and the uh, model error. So if we could update the policy pi in the estimated uh, in the estimated uh, uh dynamics by at least the c at each update. We could make sure that the policy pi's value would increase in the true dynamics, and uh, basically, uh, theoretically, we also prove that uh, we also we also give a upper bound of this uh, term c. What uh, uh, what uh, uh, what would be uh, this uh, constancy like? So this uh, so this uh, the uh, uh, so the uh, the the policy. So we could bound the. Uh, uh, the pi's value, uh, the, the error of of uh, pi's value, uh, by some a constant c that's dependent on the policy error and also dependent on the model error. And also we have shown that uh, this uh, we have shown that uh, it, it we could reduce this error by using some branched rollout technique to reduce the rollout length of uh, the trajectories. And uh, and this bound uh, this result could also be extended to the site dependent system, where this bound would also be influenced by this uh, uh, by by this the uh, natural inherent error that uh, can't be 
that can't be uh, uh, eliminated because of uh, the independent uh, uh, independent learning. And uh, so basically, and uh, and based on these uh, results, we have uh, based on these results, we designed, we have uh, uh, evaluated the algorithm in some uh, in some uh, uh, traffic traffic light control problems. And uh, basically, in this uh, traffic light control problem, it's a kind of a typical uh, a typical network systems where these traffic lights are connected to its neighbors by some uh, uh, traffic traffic lines. And uh, this agent learns to uh, learns to switch the uh, switch the signal phase. Switch, switch the signal phase. Yes. Uh, could we finish it quickly? Since the next uh, next uh, speaker will come, that uh, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Sure. I, I think I will close. I will close here about some uh, experiments. So basically, we have for the results. Uh, we have shown that uh, this algorithm could improve the hyper, uh, improve the uh, sample efficiency, and also the uh, it approach the uh, performance of uh, the uh, model free model free algorithms. And uh, also, there are some uh, demos that's uh, that's uh, available on the uh, uh, on the on the GitHub page. So uh, I will not. Uh, uh, go through this uh, thoroughly so maybe uh, so we'll come to check our github page for the video demos and uh, also details of the papers i think after i think after close up here and also for the for the questions maybe i can answer that in the in, in the in the chat to save the time okay thank you okay thank you Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, so please address questions to Yaledu in, in, in chat and she will answer them there. We're a little bit behind time. Shang Ding, what would you suggest? And maybe we can also ask Professor Levine, uh, should we continue directly or do a small break or? Maybe one minute. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think it's better to maybe just uh, Start. Have yeah to to, okay, to okay. have the next talk immediately. Then we can do a break afterwards. So uh, I would like to announce the the next speaker. He's currently an associate professor at the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences at UC UC 